Hey, this is YBR back with Beam and G Drive because this is a two part video. So I highly suggest you watch the first part of this video before you watch this part. If you haven't seen the first part, hopefully I'll put a link in the description. If I forget, hopefully another commenter out there will leave a comment that links to that other video because I forgot. So anyways, we are going to continue reviewing the Wabimp mod because this mod is so big it requires multiple videos just for the overview of the mod. This is not in depth, this is just a general look at it. So we ended the last video with the Miramar, so the next one we're going to be doing is the Moonhawk. And uh, which Moonhawk do we have? Well we have the normal Moonhawk, and on the normal Moonhawk there aren't too many options. We just got the Rust Belt, the General Yee. And then the Insanity Police. And these two names, they're a very hard choice. You know, it's like, which do you want to do? General Yee or Insanity Police? I'm doing Insanity Police because I'm like Inferno Cop in this thing, man. This is just straight up a drag car with some police attachments to it. It's like, yeah, it has the siren and it has the horn and all that, but this is just a drag car in disguise. You ain't fooling nobody. Look at how fast this thing is. 100 miles per hour. Also, the downhill did help there. And we're like topped out. Insanity Police doesn't believe in shifting up. It does believe, however, in flipping upside down and then flying through the air. Now, there's not much to actually talk about with the way it drives because it is just straight up a drag car. But then, it's been disguised as a police car. There's not much to say about that besides, yeah, it's fast. It doesn't corner well, but you give it a straight line and boy, does it go. Obviously, don't go anymore, though. It is completely damaged. So let's go ahead and bring it back up into the road which is a little bit of a distance away and next up we're gonna look at the moonhawk again so the idea here is there's another moonhawk model and this is the next generation of the moonhawk so this is like the version that'd be in the late 70s or early 80s so this will get its own video as well but out of all of these my favorite is the v6 legrand regional coupe and this thing is straight up just a gnx clone it has a turbocharged v6 engine and it makes boatloads of power like this thing is way faster than any GNX was out of the factory that is for sure but you can't really see the body in this tunnel so I'm just gonna drive outside of the tunnel so we can see the details here so when you look at this thing when it comes to a stop come on parking brake go okay so when you look at this thing it definitely has the influence from the previous model but it looks like its own vehicle. This thing does not look like it's actually based on the old version. It really looks like a next generation of that vehicle. It has its own things going on and I like the way it looks. And like I said, this will be getting its own video in the future. But now, I want to enjoy all of this power. Already up to 80 miles per hour thanks to that downhill. And we are sliding all over the place because this road is dirty and oh no! I lost control. Now that's on me, that was bad driving. I should also mention this car does have a convertible version which is pretty cool, but you can't get the GNX clone in the convertible trim. Although that would be something we could pretty easily customize if we wanted, I'm sure. But now we actually get to enjoy driving this. And that's a bit of the problem about this video is I pick all of my favorite cars to show off in the overview. So I like the way all of them drive almost, so I want to drive them, but at the same time I'm like, no, we got to move on to the next one because there's so many cars to look at. And now we're driving in the dirt, so here's the plan. We're gonna get through the dirt, and then we'll go ahead and get to look at the next vehicle, because the next one doesn't work for the dirt that well either. And this one's doing a lot better than I expected. We're plowing through this dirt at highway speeds, basically. This thing is just a monster. So there's the paved road, and we can go ahead and go to the next vehicle, but first, we must wreck the fake GNX. So what I'll do is I'll just go ahead and crash them into the rocks over on our left, or we'll slide a little bit trying to go too far to the left. And <laughs> I'm actually stuck. Okay, so it's perfectly drivable, but we have seesaw on the rock, so we can't drive. Well, then we're gonna just go ahead and bring this guy back to the road, and then we'll take a look at the next vehicle. So, next up, we have the Abishu Pessima, and this is just like what you just saw. Where this is a brand new vehicle, basically, but this one's much more obviously based on the previous generation. On the Moonhawk, it's like a complete overhaul in a brand new vehicle. On the Pessima, it's just kind of a small facelift for the next generation, where under the body, it's mostly the same. The most important thing about the version I chose, which was Santa's sleigh, is that it has a Christmas tree on top of it, which has ornaments already attached to it. Don't question that. So what I'm doing now, though, is I'm going to grab the regular Pessima, and we're going to side-by-side -side them so you can see the difference between this one and the facelifted one. 
So you can see the front end of the vehicle has been completely redesigned. It looks brand new and a little more civic-y, if you ask me. The side profile is pretty much the same between the two, ignoring the fact that one's a wagon. And then moving on to the rear, that is very similar to what you saw in the middle of the vehicle. So now, let's go ahead and drive around Santa's sleigh, wherever it is. There it is. So as I said, this is just more of a facelift on the original Pesto that the manufacturer would do just to keep it fresh before they can introduce the next full-blown brand new model out. And I know you're probably thinking, why is Santa's sleigh carrying a tree? I don't know. Don't question it. It's just Santa does what Santa wants. Santa also makes sure his sleigh is very fast. So I got a tree to deliver because I'm Santa Claus. Don't question me. Why is Santa delivering a tree? I don't know, but I'm going to deliver it. And you know where their house is? Right there off to the left. So we got to get to their house. Yes, this is great. Oh, no, wait. The tree has fallen off. This is not great. My tree is back up there. No, tree, come to me. You need to follow my voice, tree. It's actually following me. And we are falling for quite a bit longer than I expected. I thought we would just get stuck by now, but nope. Here's another layer of falling. Oh, wait. Yep, we're going. Hope my tree is making it. Here, we'll stop right there. And then what happened to my tree? Nobody knows. <laughs> he could be anywhere on a lot of mountainside. So how did this guy hold up? The damage looks pretty reasonable. You see the roof of the wagon held up good. And now I think for the longest reset of the video, all the way back up to the top of the mountain almost. And next up, we have the Pessima again, but this is the original Pessima. And there's not too many changes on this one, but we do have the GTRX version, which is a very high performance version with a three liter engine and a turbocharger on it that gives it about 26 PSI a boost, and it can move. And the only way it can do that is thanks to its all wheel drive. If you try to put that much power down with just the front wheel drive, you'd be making a huge mistake. So one thing that's kind of cool is if you look at the front, it actually has an opening and that opening, I'm assuming, is where the air comes in for the turbocharger, just like you see on the Hellcats, where it has a fake headlight. Yeah, my Pessima has a fake headlight too. And it's just a boring economy car with a heck of a lot of power. And it's broken, the tire's deflated. Unfortunately, not very durable. And we pull off the hood though, you can actually see the engine a little bit. So boom, look at that engine. That is a monstrous looking engine for a car that looks so simple on the outside. Go so back over here where we're lined up properly, and then we're going to the old school Pessima. And with the old school Pessima, my favorite one of these is the 1.8 VXIR Type V. And I like it because there's a really cool stripe on it and a really cool wing on it. So the wing on this thing, it looks like it was stolen straight off of an ETK i series. It has the exact same shape almost. It very well could be actually, I didn't do that close of a comparison, but it also has that really cool stripe on it. And I just think it has a nice look to it. The stripe and the wing going together. And also it has pretty decent performance because it's a rear wheel drive Pessima. This is what happens when you want to have an ETK i series, but all you have is a Pessima. You get this, and it drives good, which I wasn't really sure if it would because it was originally front wheel drive, then they had all wheel drive versions, and then it's like, yeah, here's a rear wheel drive version. It's like, can a car really convert that well and still drive good? The answer was yes. It also drives down cliffs really good. On the wheels. Yeah, minimal damage. There actually is very little damage for how violent that was. In fact, we might be able to still put down some power. Let's see. Come to a stop. And then, accelerate. Nope, we can't do anything. So there is a look at the damage. I don't know what happened to my awesome wing I stole from the i-series. But that's okay, because it's back as we teleport our way back up the hill. And the next vehicle we are going to be taking a look at is the... Autobello Piccolina, aka the Pickle. And the coolest thing about the Pickle is there are convertible versions. It's actually convertible and cabrio. So it's kind of a hard choice. Like, well, which one do I like better? I think I like the convertible. It just looks like a bathtub, especially in this color. It legitimately just looks like a bathtub. But it looks nice. It's a nice looking bathtub on wheels. And what are the odds we're going to flip over anyways? We don't need a roof. You only need a roof if you plan to flip the vehicle over. Okay. 
Here's the truth. I do plan to flip it over, but I doubt it'll actually happen. You can see though, this thing gets moving surprisingly well. We are up to 70 miles per hour. And let's try to flip it. Uh, just kind of go up the mountainside just a little bit. And it made me lose control. And it made me flip over. Hey, I actually succeeded. Oh, we are stuck again on a rock. That's the second time I managed to do that. At least I think that's what happened. Yeah, I can still put down power to one of the wheels. We got like one wheel drive at the moment somehow. So I'll bring it back. And then next up, we got the pigeon. And on the pigeon, there's only one option. It's the little rocket. And this one has a 600cc V8 engine and nitrous. What an unusual setup. And the funny thing is that it just sounds like a V8, but it's quiet and it revs a lot. So when you're actually driving it, it sounds like there's a NASCAR race somewhere kind of nearby, but still a decent amount of distance away. So let's go ahead and see how fast can it go. We are 100% yeehawing this thing through the air. Oh, it's upside down and rolling. Well, it gave it a good try at least. Ooh, I live. Except it's not steering very well. I may have lived, but I can no longer drive. And for some reason, this thing really likes to get upright. I don't know if the V8 engine is just heavy and really low to the ground, but it seems like this one flips onto its wheels way more often and is a little bit more stable than the regular pigeons. But I can't really keep you in a straight line, so you're done. But man, look at that paint job. He looks so fast and angry. Next up, we have the SBR4. And for the SBR4, I'm going to go with the SBR4 all-wheel drive Italia facelift DCT. So this is an SBR4 with a V8 engine and some turbo. So it's very, very fast. We're already over 100 miles per hour and flying through the air. We are really getting some air time here. And oh, we're actually going to hit the sign. That was not supposed to happen. Well, we basically run out of road at this point. I still got more cars I want to drive. So I'm going to go ahead and switch maps. We're going to head over to Utah, USA and continue driving this there. And now we can really see just how fast is the Hiroti 2020 SBR4 all wheel drive Italia facelift DCT. Now, one complaint I have about the mod is a lot of the performance figures are just bogus. Like, you look at this one, it says, oh, it has 174 horsepower. Wrong. If you've driven this thing for more than five seconds, you know that is just wrong. This thing is very, very fast. And it looks pretty cool, too. On the front, it got a couple of changes, make it look a little more aggressive. Same with the rear. And then it has the louvers. I love louvers on cars. I don't need rear visibility when I have a car this fast. 130 miles per hour, no problem. And we gotta slam on the brakes to make sure you don't crash into the wall. Getting real close to it, that was nice. Although, we should eventually crash into the wall. So that's the plan. Once we reach 160 miles per hour, we're gonna tap the wall just a little bit. So that's about 160 and tap. Whoop. Well, there was the tap and then there was the boom. The boob did the damage. The tap didn't really do that much. I think of the tap, we just kind of lost the bumper, got a little bit of frame damage probably too at those speeds. So now back up to the road, and we're going to take a look at the next vehicle. So next up, we have the Burnside Special. On the Burnside Special, we have two options. The V10 Supermatic, which is pretty much just an engine swap. And then we have the Monster, which is an alternative drag version that uses the engine from the V10 version. So if you look at this thing and you look at it compared to the regular drag version, you'll see actually the engine does look different. So here's a quick little comparison we can do. What are you doing climbing mountains, you crazy hooligan? Get over on the road and then be straight and flat. And then hood, be gone. Hey, don't hurt my other one. What's up with you? So you can see here, this engine is a V8. You can kind of count the individual cylinders. It'd be like one, two, three, four on that side. And since it's a V, there'd be more on the other side. But then you look at this one, that's a V10. It'd be one, two, three, four, five. So the overall setup is very similar to that drag car, but the engine is completely different. And this engine, it has a cool sound. I'm gonna let you guys just listen to this thing real quick. Yeah, it sounded cool until I completely ruined it. 
The whine of the supercharger mixed with the unique sound of the V10 engine, mmm, that is a good sound. I don't know where the sound from the V10 engine comes from, I don't know if it's maybe based on the 5 cylinder engine that comes with the game or what, but either way, I love the way it sounds, although the performance, not as good as the regular drag car it feels like, I just struggle a little bit more to really get the power down with this one it feels like, and it seems to top out at a lower speed, like right now we're pretty much topped out, this is not going to go any faster, so since we're pretty much topped out, nothing else we can do driving wise, time to wreck it. And that is how you separate the body of a vehicle from the frame with minimal amounts of damage. Every other method I've tried does a lot more damage. I like how it's like popped up. This looks like a funny car. When you open up the cage of the driver and you just pop open the whole thing, that's exactly what this looks like. So all you need to do is just have it like pull back down and then you're ready to race or you pull it off completely like I just did. So this is a nice little spot here actually. So we're going back up here. And then next up, we're going over to the sunburst and I'm gonna be using another drag car like we're gonna finish this up with a bunch of drag cars because there are a lot of cool drag cars so this is the drag version of the sunburst which feels a heck of a lot faster than the other drag car we're just driving and kind of interestingly this is rear wheel drive swapped but it puts down the power so well you wouldn't even know it this thing launches hard and so much cleaner than the burnside we were driving earlier it is great no who left the car in the middle of the road it's going so fast until that happened. And now, we just have the long crash that we must wait for it to finish. What a huge crash. You know what? This might still be able to drive. Let's find out real quick. Oh, uh, onto your wheels, Survivor. <laughs> that was basically a 150 mile per hour crash, and it managed to keep driving. That's the thing, though. When you have a crash that bounces around like that, that means the car isn't having to absorb the impact that much. So it's quite frequently able to keep driving, although we ain't got no steering. I'm trying to go left, it does not want to go left. And before we move on from this thing, just a closer look at it, it has carbon fiber everywhere from the trunk, to the wing, to the roof, all the way to the hood, and then it again has no headlight here so the engine can breathe and it can get more power. So next up we're going to be going to the D series, and with the D series there's only one option I saw, that's the D15 Stinger. So there's nothing really too special about this, it's just a real fast truck. Almost as fast as the drag version it feels like, especially once you turn on the nitrous to give it even more power. And we are up to 140, 50, 60, 70, it just keeps pulling for a long time. But it is starting to overheat unfortunately, who left that car in the road again? Oh my goodness, that car is the evilest car I have ever ever seen it made me completely ruin my truck or so you would think check this out it still drives somehow not very well at all i have no steering virtually but it can put down some power and then go and slam into the rocks because i have no control over it uh oh this engine is dying it can't take it no more back up here we go and just for fun we're gonna do something stupid we're going to try to take this thing off-roading, and we're going to enter the off-road like so. This is obviously the best way to enter the off-road area. Don't question me. Eventually, we will get to the dirt road. We might be upside down by then, though. Aha! I made it. Now, this truck does have all-wheel drive, so it should be great at off-roading. The best you've ever seen. And now we're done off-roading. Up the hill we go. That didn't quite work. So it works perfectly fine in off-roading, even though it has a ton of power. I was really thinking, you know, with this much power, will it be able to work? And it works fine. I like the way the bed is like half open there. So you can just peek inside and say, hey, what's inside the truck? Nothing. So back up here we go. And now we're going to take a look at probably the fastest vehicle in this mod. And one of the fastest vehicles I've ever seen. It is a mod for the Wentworth DT40L, surprisingly. It is the DT40L Superhero. So this thing, it just gives you bigger rockets and it's so fast when i'm driving right here i gotta make sure i don't activate the rockets accidentally i want to activate the rockets once i have a big fat straightaway ahead of me so i can really use the power so there's a straightaway three two one go that is a monster <laughs> my goodness that was just pure chaos and glitchiness. And the best part is, is I don't think there's any custom parts to this thing. 
So it's not junky parts from a mod that's glitching. We just crashed so hard that the stock parts decided to glitch all over the place. Here we go again. This time on the floor and then coast it. After one second of driving, we have valve train damage from over revving the engine. That is impressive. Here we go. Full speed, baby. Oh, well, there's another rock and there's a ton of glitching. This thing is so stupidly fast. I want to see what happens when we take it in the tunnel. Because with the tunnel, ha, look at this. It's accelerating so hard. Body panels are just falling off. But I was saying, when we accelerate in the tunnel, it'll kind of keep us going in a straight line. And hopefully, we won't get caught in anything. So this should be utter chaos. I want to make sure it doesn't have any damage before we start this. Here we go. Just floor it. Yeah, ride the wall. Oh, this is working great. I can't exactly tell what was happening until we hit the thing on the roof. We could actually make it through there though, no problem. We just gotta tone it down just a little bit. When we start to go onto the roof, we slow it down. So we take it nice and easy on this first corner. Don't want to make the thrusters all mangled and out of shape. Just be patient. The time will come to thrust. And when that time comes, you will know it. There we go. 200 miles per hour ish. And it is flying and bouncing all over the place. Oh yeah, look at this. The multi-lane straightaway drift. This technique is banned in 17 continents and three countries. Don't ask how it works. It's just that mad of a technique. And we can actually keep riding the wall all the way out of the tunnel. <laughs> that worked amazingly. That was so fast. That is like probably the world record for going through the tunnel. If anybody's ever seen a faster one, I would be shocked. That was impressive. Good job, banana. I'm so sorry that you can't stay on the road, but you're gonna fall off. I can't control it, obviously. It's just a piece of metal. Oh, it's still falling. Okay. You done, banana? Finally. Not much to look at there. It's just completely ruined. So back up to the road. And next up, we have the 8 Series. And on the 8 Series, again, not many options. We have just the yellow jacket, which is very similar to the Stinger that we saw in the D-Series. It's kind of the same thing where it's just a real high-powered version that has nitrous and stuff. And it's a bright yellow color. And the names are even similar, so I'm assuming they would be related. Like the Cyclone and the Typhoon from years ago. That kind of idea. This one does not seem as fast as the other one, however. Even with nitrous and flooring it. Nah, the other one's faster without nitrous. Still, though, probably one of the faster 8 Series you'll ever see. It does make sense, though, because if you look at the engine bay, it looks like there's a lot more room on the 8 Series to give it some serious power. Ah, oh, not again! Who is this car still in the way? Get out of here! Seriously, I always forget he's there. I don't know why. All right, every time after you crash into him, though, we can keep driving. You can't explain this nonsense. And this one, we actually have steering still because we weren't going as fast as we were in the D-Series. So we're actually almost up to 100 miles per hour, which is more than enough for one final crash. So off the edge we go, and into the rocks we hit. Surprisingly minimal damage for going over 100 miles per hour, and can we put down power still? No. It is broken. So not much else to do with him, so we'll bring him back up. And go on to the next one, which is the hopper. And for the hopper, we have a few more options here. My favorite is the Jungle Serpent Special. So this is an inline six version with a turbocharger made for off-roading, but it's still a factory vehicle. So it's not gonna be as crazy as like the Custom, which is just this absolute off-roading beast, but it's more than capable for most of the things you'll throw at it. Unless you try to go rock climbing. That it will struggle with. But all the area around Utah, USA, we should be fine. We don't even need to follow these dirt paths. They're just there as suggestions. And most of the time, I don't listen to suggestions unless I asked for them. And I didn't ask for your suggestions, Dirt Path. So you tell me which way to go. I'm going to go through the water. That's right, Dirt Path. You don't tell me what to do. And over here, the one thing we got to do, not hit those rocks. I told you, it's not good at rock climbing. If we hit the rock, we will just get wrecked. So we're just going to swerve through the rocks. And when you're going through the rocks like this, you got to be decisive. You got to say, this is my path and I'm going. If you stutter, you will crash into it. Like right there, I stuttered. I said, I'm going to go left. And then I decided, no, I'm going to go right. We're not going to make it. And then we hit it. But I don't really think it affected the way it drives too badly. Yeah, it still seems like it's driving fine. So we'll go back into the water and let's try to climb the mountain a little bit. Well, I got a fun idea. Let's try to like climb the cliff face. I think that's what you call it. So what we're doing is we're going up the dirt and then right here we have the rock 
that is just kind of like the face of the mountain. We're going to drive along that. And this actually works really well. Until we get to that spot. That's just too tall. I don't think there's any way this thing can climb up that next rock. So let's just uh, dump it off the edge. Yeah, it'll work fine. Smoosh. Break. Damage. Destruction. This thing is pretty beefy. I wonder in the right situation could we get it upright by locking the differentials and just accelerating and spinning around maybe but going in the water is not going to help it'll help probably keep the engine nice and cool and it'll give it a long time to try to get upright although eh, i don't think it's going to be able to get upright so we are now done with you and on to the roamer and for the roamer once again not many options but there are a couple one of them is called the mistake and this thing is a monster it has a giant diesel engine and it runs at like 60 psi boost so this thing has infinite torque basically it is something else and just driving through here you really don't see just how much torque it has the best way to show you how much torque it has would be to tow something so we will do that in a second but we're already up to speed and we don't want to waste it so we got to find something to crash into and there's really not much around here besides trees and rocks. And I think I prefer rocks because crashing the trees, sometimes you can't really see the damage. So there is the damage. And then time for the trailer. We're going to grab the regular travel trailer, the standard one. So it's the full weight. And we're going to stick it on this thing. And it'll probably barely notice it. What are you doing? You stupid car always in the way. Oh, no. It doesn't have a snorkel. I'm a fool. I will just go ahead and move it out of the water, and then we'll try this again. I think the trailer should be okay. We won't be fully submerged when we attach the trailer, right? Yeah, it looks like we'll be all right. Great. Okay, trailer is attached, and we are off. And we are yanking this trailer through the water like nothing. So much torque doesn't care. Everything you do, it's just so much torque, it doesn't care. Driving through the water will now slow you down because you haven't got traction no matter what, but still doesn't really care. Honestly, driving it with or without the trailer, barely notice a difference in performance. This trailer could fall off and I probably wouldn't even notice aside from the fact that I can see it. If it was just based on how it drives, I don't know. Maybe when it swings back and forth and you can feel it in the truck like it's doing right now, that I would notice. That's it though. Alright, we got a nice road here. We can really get this thing up to speed and push the limits. Or, as an alternative, we can just wreck it into the rocks. I like wrecking into the rocks, don't you? Oh! <laughs> that is hilarious. I completely destroyed the travel trailer and I have minimal damage to my vehicle. Yeah, there's some damage, but for how demolished that trailer is, I came out of that really well. And let's see, can I put down the power? Oh yeah, no problem. Infinite torque is still available on tap. Now we just gotta come to a stop, and then on to the next vehicle, but there's a bit of an issue. The T-Series is the next vehicle, and there's nothing for the T-Series, which is just kind of surprising. Every other vehicle has at least one mod, but not the T-Series. So to the developers of the mod, I have a challenge for you. Add something for the T-Series. Uh, it doesn't even need to have any extra parts, just a configuration, just so they can be like, BAM! This mod officially has a mod for every stock vehicle. Because I think that'd be cool. So anyways, that's going to do it for this video. Expect a lot more of this mod in the future. Because like I said, this is just the overview video. I want to really get in depth on certain parts of this thing. And those videos will be coming in the future, I'm sure. So if you like this video, look forward to those ones as well. And until next time, this has been YBR. And remember, if you like or dislike this video, I will know. I can tell by counting the number of mods that are in this mod. So do the right thing, and I'll see you next time.